morning, OCC. Morning. Welcome. You're all so spread out. <laughs> Good to see you all this morning. Welcome to those who are watching online as well. It's raining outside, but it's going to be raining in here real soon. So Amen. let's go. Go ahead.
Jesus, you're the real thing. Ended all my searching. I finally realized that I'm alive to bring you glory. All I am and all I so worthy of our lives laid down. He is so worthy of our all, every piece of us, every part. He's with us. He's with us in the good times. He's with us in the struggles. We're going to hear about that as we hear our message today. God is faithful. He is a faithful, faithful provider. He's faithful through us, through every storm. There's always another in the fire. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden. darkness 
bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space beneath wears thin, I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. the name but the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all we're gonna sing that two more times there is no other name but the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all there is no other name but the name that is Jesus excited about that. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There'll be another We call. 
breath of God, breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe. So breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe, oh breath of God, breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe. Breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe, oh breath of God. Declare this, breathe, O oh breath of God. <clears throat> breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe. Breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O breath of God, now breathe. worship you, give you all glory and honor and praise be yours. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. God, we just thank you. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. If you'd just have a seat, please. Father, we just thank you for this blessed time together. We thank you for the morning that you've given us to just worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father God, for the worship that has been started already this morning. And we ask that it would continue in our hearts through the day. We also thank you and praise you for just a time that we can quietly come before you and know that you're right with us and that you take care of us. Your word says in Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That whole chapter is a warfare chapter. Read it through as you get time to, but know that he has his very best for you as we've already started worshiping this morning. Father, we just thank you now that as we go forward with the morning that uh, you're guiding right with us as have already been started through this, this singing that's been taking place. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. 
I'm going to make a couple of announcements, uh, and then we're going to have a little fun in a moment. But I want to uh, just, uh, there's a water baptism coming up uh, June 5th. So if you've not ever been uh, water baptized, uh, please let Pastor Larry know, and everything will be all set up and uh, an enjoyable time doing that. There's kids camps coming up uh, in, in the month of July. Uh, partake of that. There are also, uh, if there's families here that need some help in defraying the cost, please don't be embarrassed. Ask us and we'll help. Kids camps are so important. I'm just going to give one testimony. I led uh, a group of uh, children 20 years ago to a kids camp. My daughter was one of those. She developed a friendship. That friendship of hers remained to, to, to this day. They got together, uh, met once a month. They've always sent letters. They made phone calls and all that stuff through this course of time. And it's just beautiful to see what God will do, not only in friendships, but in their hearts as they're being ministered to at the kids' camp, the fun and games that go on, the, the, the food and all that stuff that is there for them is just a rewarding time. So moms and dads, grandpas and grandpas, and those of us in the congregation, if we can help, please do to get these kids to kids camp. Another um, thing that's coming up, there's a women's uh, gathering uh, June 4th. Partake of it, ladies. It's a great time to get together, to just share one another's burdens, to also have some fun. And if I know Shiloh well enough, there's going to be a lot of great things going on that morning. So plan on it, take part in it, and, and enjoy that. Um, there's also the little baby bottles for the, um, the uh, Tri-County Life Care deal. That's now through Father's Day. And then we'll collect them at that point. And we also, I, I, I forgot, I want to lift that um, group up today. Uh, we just thank you and praise you for all they do, Lord. And we ask that uh, you guide their steps. I know they're also believing for a ultrasound machine and, and the training for that. And so, Father God, we just call that forth in the name of Jesus also. And we just praise you and thank you for that. Okay. Who does not have a bulletin that needs one? If the ushers would pass one out, that would be great. Hold your hand high because they're not going to see you if you don't. Uh, I got a little something, and who's running the, the sound there? Johnny Little. Oh, silver away! Get him up, Scout! Thank you, sir. Okay, why did I do that? How many of you guys need about eight cups of coffee in the morning to get going? Well, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm one of those that my wife just, uh, she, we've been married close to 34 years now, and she goes, Paul, I'm sleeping. <laughs> how come you're Polly Perky every morning? <laughs> it's just how God made me. But my point is, grab the connection card. Everybody has something to be prayed for. Everybody. Fill it out. Put it in the offering bucket. We, Wednesday mornings, pray for these during our staff meeting. The uh, deacons and crew 
Saturday mornings, they meet together, they pray over these cards. If there's not a card in the bucket, it's telling me that we have no needs in the body of Christ. Mine's there. I don't write one out every week, but I know you guys have been praying for me. And it's been a tremendous blessing. Am I where I need to be, where I want to be? Not yet, but God is working. But I got to tell you something. He wants to work on your behalf also. If you've got a family member that don't know the Lord, write it down. If you've got somebody that's going through cancer, write it down. We get to pray for everybody here. Take that moment to do so. I'm going to end on, on that uh, for that part of it. But now I thought there was something else that we did a couple of times uh, with Pastor Larry over the years. And I would like us to take some time to pray for one another. I've got another song. It's not quite as jazzy as the one that we just did. But uh, I would like that to play in the background. People who I've asked Holly Corson and Brian Ziedelman, but there's others of you that will pray for others. Come forward, and if you need prayer, come forward with prayer. We're going to spend about 8 minutes and 30 seconds doing this. Uh, because that's how long the song is, and then we'll turn it over to Josiah for the message. So get your prayer hats on. Let's take some time and pray with one another. And uh, don't everybody come out all at once, but no, please, come on forward. And if you're not going to come forward, pray for somebody Grandma where you're seated next. Pray out loud. Yeah, yeah, kids are released, please. To me it sounded like mumbling Like she was out of her mind She said, boy, this kind of praying Is what saved my life You ought to try it sometime And now I know she was right She was talking to Jesus she was talking to Jesus And she'd been talking to Jesus For all of her life Mama used to drag me to church Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights Khaki pants and a polo shirt Boy, I put up a fight she said, son, one day you'll thank me For having God in your life And yeah, I know she was right Yeah, my mama was right Cause now I'm talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus Yeah, my mama was right now I'm talking to Jesus Yeah, I love talking to Jesus And I'll be talking to Jesus For the rest of my life What a friend we have in Jesus What a friend we have in Jesus Don't you know What a friend we have in Jesus Oh, oh what a friend we have, what a friend we have in Jesus, what a friend we have in Jesus, what a friend we have in Jesus, oh, I've got three of my own now, trying to raise them upright, my oldest is 15, and I remember what that was like Trying to deal with the trauma Trying to figure out the questions in life And I've been looking for a way to show him 
how to make it all right. Then he walked in my room while I was saying my prayers the other night. He said, I'll come back later. I can tell you got a lot on your mind. I said, it's not an interruption. You couldn't have picked a better time. Cause I was just talking to Jesus. Come over and give it a try. We started talking to Jesus. sound pretty just tell them what's on your heart cause it's not a religion cause it's more like a friendship so just talk to your father like you are his kid just start talking to Jesus just start talking to Jesus you can talk to Jesus Oh, whenever you like Just start talking to Jesus Just start talking to Jesus Just keep talking to Jesus For the rest of your So close, what a friend we have in Jesus. He's right in front of you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Just talk to Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Whoa. What a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. Just keep talking to Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
just keep talking to Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Just keep talking to Jesus. Thank you, folks. Just remember the friend you have in Jesus. So without further ado, Josiah is going to present us with a great message. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. It was cool to hear it again today. Um, but I do want to say that I really feel like I can't really go on without acknowledging that it is Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, and I am also aware that Jesus uh, wasn't a U.S. citizen and uh, that the Bible and the Constitution are different things. But I'm also aware how fortunate we are to assemble together and that we're we're actually here safe, that we have brothers and sisters in our faith that don't have this opportunity. And that a large part of that is because of those who have faced evil and armed conflict and some of those did not come home. And some of you sitting here know the faces, the stories, and the names of some of those people. And I hold some of them in my heart. So I just wanted to um, just recognize as our culture does the cost and not become ungrateful for even just that blessing of being able to just be together and even broadcast what we're doing. So I just wanted to say that. So it is a blessing to be with you today. I also have another confession. I, uh, I encountered a bit of a rebellious spirit this morning. And, uh, and the reason that is, is because growing up, my mom had one rule when it came to going to church and getting ready for church. And it was, you cannot wear shorts to church. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're aware of my attire, <laughs> I made a decision. So <laughs> I realized uh, that I don't think that's in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> so uh, I thought to myself, I think I'm going to do it. And uh, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but if my mom ends up watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> so... <laughs> But I got that off my chest. <laughs> but I do want to uh, share a story with you guys from the Bible, of all places. And uh, I, was, I was once told that every good story contains pirates. And then, unfortunately, this story has no pirates in it. So I feel like I'm setting you guys up for a letdown. But... Here's what I can offer you instead. Fortune-telling slave, exorcism, political power, suffering, a weird prison break, attempted suicide, and encouragement. Is that, is that fair? Is that a good trade-off for no pirates? Okay, we're good. So let's set the scene. No pirates. Jesus completed his ministry. He rose from the dead, and now the church is forming. The disciples are teaching what Jesus taught them. And they're teaching others who are teaching others. And as we are, they're waiting for Christ to return and longing for the day when everything is made right. Evil will be defeated and suffering will be no more. Paul and Silas are two of these Christians. They're going to city to city, sharing the message of the gospel. And there has been opposition because these Christians have empowered poor, the oppressed, women, enslaved peoples, and not to mention, there's actually a spiritual world that opposes them as well. Pastor Larry shared how last week, Paul relied on guidance from the Holy Spirit to even come to Philippi in the first place. So these guys are doing God's work. So I'd like to just jump right into Acts 16, verse 16. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl 
who had a spirit of deviation and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Christ Jesus to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. Yeah, I had two thoughts when I first read this. That's really cool. The power of the Holy Spirit in them has the authority to cast out this demon. And then my second thought is, Paul cast out that demon because he was greatly annoyed after days of this woman following them. Like, so this woman, maybe she was taunting them. I don't know. But he didn't cast it out when he first met her. And that feels maybe a little bit odd. Not because he had compassion for what she was going through, but annoyance. Gives me a little bit of hope for myself sometimes. <laughs> but I do know that Paul was a very smart man. He was well educated. He was a Roman citizen and a Jew. That spirit telling fortunes was making powerful people money. And Paul might have just not wanted to go down that road. He doesn't need any more enemies. But when Paul became annoyed enough, he cast it out, and that spirit was no longer, no longer able to use her, and those profiting off of her suffering could no longer profit at the name of Jesus. See, Scripture does not tell us what happened in that woman's life, but I know that the gospel impacted her, at least in that moment. So I'd like to keep reading the story. Acts 16 Verse 19. When her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them in prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So my question is, uh, did Paul and Silas do anything wrong? They were preaching and teaching to serve God. They even cast out a demon. But they're suffering despite their intent, their heart, and it seems God is allowing it to happen. The rights as Romans is ignored. They're accused without trial and are beaten. God did not intervene. Then they're thrown into prison, and God still did not intervene. Oh, and let's add some stocks or like shackles. Okay, God. I'm going to ask the question, why? These guys are literally doing ministry, and now they have suffered injustice as well. They're physically harmed and have lost their freedom. Where are you, God? Is that a fair question to ask? So how did Paul and Silas respond to being abandoned by God? Well, verse... 25, I guess we'll see. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. After that day of being beaten and thrown wrongfully in prison, would you be singing hymns? It would take me quite a while to get to, like, great is thy faithfulness. These guys understood something. They were not abandoned. It was not about them or their earthly comfort. And God was with them. Because the Holy Spirit is with them. When they were being beaten, God was there. In prison, God was there. See, the gospel's not a promise of life in bubble wrap until he returns. I'm just being real. Evil is still here. 
Jesus himself endured crucifixion. The Holy Spirit is a comforter, and I know he is present in some of the darkest moments of our lives. And these men knew the mission, the Great Commission, does not change despite our circumstances. Even walking into prison, others saw what they had physically endured. They were beaten with rocks. That had an impact on those suffering when they were singing. Or those, those others in prison, I should say. Their suffering had an impact when they responded that way. They knew they were still valuable and had purpose wherever they were. So, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw the prison doors were open, he drew his sword, and he was about to kill himself, supposing that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them in the same hour of the night, washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once he and all his family. And they brought them up to his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. This was a literal prison break because the prison actually broke. <laughs> like God moved the earth. And a jailer went from sleeping to having the worst day of his life to celebrating with prisoners. It's an unreal story. But again, I have this weird brain where I kind of get to this critical part, which uh, I know God made me this way, so I kind of put it on him when I do this stuff. But, um, but God didn't heal Paul and Silas's wounds. These guys were used in miracles, God literally destroyed a prison, and yet their wounds needed to be washed. I don't know why God didn't heal their physical wounds in that moment. I can wonder. I mean, I'd probably be skeptical if I heard this story and these guys had no wounds on their body at all. Maybe it was a way of credibility. But I really don't know what God was doing. It seems kind of unfair to let them suffer in that way. I don't really know. Let's go on with the story. Verse 35. When it was day, the magistrates sent the police saying, let those men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us publicly uncondemned men who are Roman citizens and have thrown us into prison and now throw us out secretly? No, let them come themselves and take us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them. So it's kind of fun to see the good guys win in the end. I mean, they have some wounds, but they even got an apology. You don't always hear that in the story. Yeah. And the story goes on to say that they, they visited the church and they encouraged them and they left the city going on to continue ministering. But what's interesting is I still kind of sit here and I, I go, at these different points of this story, I don't know what God's doing when they're being beaten, when they're in jail. But I, so I kind of have to just stop and say, 
his ways are not my ways. An annoying demon led to a prison guard's family coming into the faith. And now I'm talking about that story on the other side of the planet, centuries later. It had an impact. That doesn't mean it felt good for Paul and Silas to be beaten with rods or that it was fair. But I know that in suffering, God is with us. We are not alone. And he may not do things the way that we want, but the mission does not change. I had a man share with me once while his spouse was dying that he wanted to suffer well. And during that time, he had all sorts of other things going on in his life. He had pe- like things like a lot of accusations against his family. And I just couldn't even fathom what he meant, like suffer well. And I realized he was talking about how we respond in the face of adversity. How after being beaten, they walk into a jail and start singing and it has an impact because it doesn't make sense. It's what others see. I do believe God is able to move the earth, break prisons, and I do believe God can heal. But what if I'm going to still endure some suffering in this life? Christ did suffer on the cross, and the comfort of the Spirit is available to us. But also I have another question. Does that mean that we fail if we question God? I think there is room for lamenting. Lamenting or sorrowfully crying out to God is in Scripture. Like any communication, I think being honest about what you're feeling is probably the best course of action. But remember his faithfulness. What God has done for his people and for you in the past. And proclaim it. I think a prayer is something like, God, my health, my finances, my job is discouraging. Actually, I hate it. I feel forgotten, lost, angry. Ah! (laughs) But I believe you could heal me. You could get me a new job. Whatever. I'm just not seeing it right now. I still know that you're God. I know that you're creator, that you're faithful. I trust you because you've done it in the past, because you've met this need for me in the past. My friends, I just want to say stay on mission. If you feel discouraged, be honest. Let God know, but don't get off mission. Sing hymns in a prison for all to hear. God is bigger than our circumstances, and even in death, Christ overcame. So even in death, we have hope in Christ Jesus. So honestly, as we prepare to conclude and worship, I want to leave you with a verse from Micah 7 7 as a prayer for whatever you're facing in life right now. So I basically just want to say, like, if you just want to take a moment and just kind of think about that thing. Whatever that big, that big struggle is right now. Me, I have a little bit of an unknown. That's my thing. I'm facing, like, what's my next uh, avenue of work and things like that. And I just want to just read this kind of short prayer over you guys. But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I'm just so thankful for this community and all you guys being here. And even the opportunity to be with you and share. Be blessed. Well, as you think about that prayer, yeah, go, yeah, that's do it. <laughs> Thanks, Josiah. As you think about that prayer, um, these altars are open. I, this song that I'm going to sing has been um, resonating in my head for a while now. I, um, if you know me, um, you know, sometimes what we have to lay down is our burdens and our, our, um, the things that we're questioning. 
And sometimes the things that we need to lay down are our pride and our desire to control things. And um, I'll be perfectly transparent that it's the latter of the two that I struggle with the most. I, um, I have no problem giving him the things that I think I can't handle. But there's a lot of things I think I can. And there's a lot of other things that I think I should have an opinion on. We have no shortage of opinions in today's world. And I've just gotten to a place, and some people have heard me say this in the last um, month or so, I'm just sick of my own opinions. And I want the words that's, that come from my mouth to be his words and to be uh, words of comfort that are not my opinion or my good advice, um, but the rock that I stand on and his words. And so um, you may not know this song. If you do, I um, sing it <laughs> loud and proud. Um, if you don't listen to the words um, and know that these altars are open because we truly do, whether it's our burdens or whether it's our pride, we need to lay it down. God, I give you what I can today. These scattered ashes that I hid away, I lay it down. at your feet from the corners of my deepest shame the empty places that I've worn your name show me the love I say I believe oh help me lay it down and for all oh lord i lay it down oh lord i lay it down help me to lay it down oh lord i lay it down oh may this be and for all cause you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the 
glory, all the glory is yours. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. be and for all, once and for all. He is worthy of it all, and he wants it all. He's a jealous God. He wants it all. Lay it at his feet. In Jesus' name.